something bad could happen here? Possibly, but probably not on the scale that it would in an organization where there isn't many people that wish to see you, see the best of you, and with dedicated counselors and just people who care. If it was an isolated situation where there was, a, or if it was a public school where you were just getting bullied and that was it, and no one was there to help you, or you couldn't, you couldn't talk to anyone about it, then that that's the potential for danger, and more so than it is here, where you can, where there is somebody you can talk to if you're having trouble with somebody or something. Okay. So I have a question. Um, do you think that the average LCI student would feel comfortable? going to a faculty member or administrator and identifying a fellow student that they think might be a risk? Can you that Do you think the average LCA student would feel comfortable approaching an adult staff person and saying, that kid in that class, I'm worried about, he or she makes me nervous, and this is why, and someone needs to pay attention to it. I think so. You feel like that? Yep. the average student would be, yes. feel comfortable doing that? Ninth grader, 14 years old, brand new to the school. Uh, maybe not people that have just come into the school, they don't know the people around them. Mm -hmm. But I think people that have been here as long as we have, sure. I think that, yes, that they would be. And I guess the reason I'm asking is because I think that what I see is it looks like a need for everyone to be part of this attempt to, to quell school shootings, right? So students are being asked to speak up. Teachers are being asked to carry guns and to throw themselves in front of bullets to protect the students. Everyone's got a part in this process. I just wonder how willing everybody is. Are we all all in on that? Is that the sense that you've gotten in some of your research? Or is there just still a lot of fear? And when it comes down to it, if bullets start flying, we're all going to hide behind desks. I think there is some aspect to it that it could just crumble when, the, when there's a school shooter. Uh, I also think that, I think like Blaine said, a new student would be as comfortable, but as you build uh, rela relations mm -hmm. with, uh, with your faculty, you become more comfortable speaking up and just kind of uh, finding out what the environment's like. If you've got a lot of joke or jokers that just say stuff to get attention, They've got to differentiate that between someone who's uh, who's actually serious about it. Yeah. Right. Are you asking like as a school or as a nation as a whole? Well, I think that's a great question. Yeah, both. Do you think that our environment is different, or we're pretty reflective of nationally? Uh, I mean, our environment is definitely different than just because we have teachers that genuinely love us. You know, and part of love is. You're willing to sacrifice for those that you do love, but at public schools, a lot of those teachers are there for the paycheck. You know, they're not there for the students. Like I was at public school, most of my teachers were Christians, but there were some teachers that you know they didn't really care. You know, so just as a, as a whole, I would say we're not in a good place, and it's only going to get worse, especially with the media blaming it all on guns. Like this is the issue of school shootings is not a gun issue. There was some rep, like now terrorists, they're going on sidewalks and mowing people down with cars, you know, like we take away the gun, people that want to do harm and mass destruction are going to do it. They're going to find a way and do it. So it's, as a whole, no, the nation is not in a good place and we need a leader to step up and say, we're going in the wrong direction, we need to change or this nation is going down great point, Zach. Uh, you talk about a leader stepping up. Do you guys think that it can be right here? Like, four of you guys. I mean, you're leaders of this school, right? I mean, you know, uh, people people come to you, they gravitate towards you. You guys are, you know, you guys all seem like stand-up individuals. I mean, you know, think about 
you know, bullying has been around since there were people to be bullies and be bullied, right? So, you know, does it start here with the self-policing? You know, uh, one of the questions that was raised was, do you think a student would come forward and say, hey, you know, I know Zach's been picking on some kids. Uh, can you do something about it? Or I think maybe Zach's a, a threat to you because he's been bullied. Yeah. Uh, does, doesn't it start right here, though? Yes, sir. Or when yeah. you see the kids who are being bullied, just, you know, kind of band together like to let the, the guys who are the bullies let them know that man that's just not acceptable yeah well it was just i went to a marine camp this summer and one of the speakers there he just said there are lots of number twos which is you know people if someone steps up and does it they'll support them He's, but he was just saying there's not a lot of number one in the world. that'll be like start the movement you know so it's just yeah i would definitely say i mean if that's what it takes i would do it i would I mean, I'm trying to. It's work in progress, but yeah. gotta start somewhere, though, right? Yeah. I, I have three thoughts. But first, I want to um, uh, yeah, when Mr. Cat said that you all are leaders, some of you smart. I've had the privilege of knowing most of you in class and Zach from church, but you are each one of you. I have watched take leadership over students who are younger than you, or in different organizations in your areas of interest. You all are not leaders in the same way, but you each have an area of influence that God has blessed you with. And I have been privileged to watch each of you take a role, a leadership role, and watch you grow, some of you since you were freshmen. And so you should take some um, comfort in that, but also look as how God might use that for you in the future. Having said that, um, you talked about how the risk might be less here in our environment simply because of the teachers or the type of students that we have in the environment we have. Given that you perceive that the risk here might be less, are there less drastic steps that we could take to um, guard against an active shooter other than arming teachers? So we have... Um so there's a lot of options for that as well. It's mostly just cost effectiveness when it comes down to this. Mm -hmm. So there's, you can obviously install metal detectors. You can give every kid a bulletproof backpack. And there's even bulletproof drywall now. So bullets can't travel through walls as easily. I don't know how much of a factor that is like in every school shooting, but I think it would certainly help. And then there's also school design, which I think Clayton can talk about. So, yeah. Um, school design is, the standard school design right now is long hallways that, you, that can easily be shot through. So they're looking at the new school designs uh, in the shape of an E. So it maximizes the number of evacuation routes. It's got three main entrances. Uh, that can be accessed by from the parking lot or overhead bridges. The bridges are mainly for like a lookout, so to speak, for the teachers. Um, and the classrooms come with uh, locks and security doors. So, but not all schools can have the funds to just demolish and rebuild. So, yeah. Of the different options that you have researched, is there one that you think is most promising or most cost effective or would be best other than arming school teachers? I don't think there's like a clear cut winner in this because it's not possible to put like a dollar price on a kid's life. So it's that's a pretty hard question to answer, but I think me personally, I would go with kind of like all of them, if that makes sense. I mean, obviously that would be way too much to okay. feasibly for every school to do, but yeah, I guess. It really, it really does depend on the kind of school. If like a school that's already built can't really implement e-design, it too, like they can add another entrance, but that's just about it. They can, they're not going to rebuild the whole school. Same for both with drywall. It just, it depends on what the school has, like funding as well. Some options are a lot cheaper than other ones. And so it, it really does depend based on what school and what, what avail what's available to them. There is no really best 
be all in all best solution. Well, what about proactive steps that we can take with regard to helping people not get in a position where they feel like they want to hurt others? Is there anything that this school or other schools could do? I mean, just as an individual, I mean, if you're walking down the hallway and you see someone that looks like they're having a bad day, say hi to them and ask them how their day's going. Or if you see somebody sitting in lunch by themselves, go sit with them. You know, just be personable and show the love of Christ to people. And that's the biggest thing, is to show love. I think that it would be certainly very helpful to have, like, I think everybody should have some sort of therapy, per se, whether that's, like, an actual, like, therapist that you go to and you pay, or if that's just someone that you feel comfortable talking to. I think that would help if everyone had a person like that, but I don't know if that's going to happen because we live in a broken world where not everybody's accepted. Of the school shootings that you guys researched in the last decade or two, did any of them already have steps in place? Did any of them have metal detectors or the one, there was the one at Frederick Douglass extremely recently. The school the school does have metal detectors and how a gun got in is that a student came in late and came in an entrance that didn't have a grounded metal detector and so they had to use just like a bar one just like a small handheld one, and that wasn't able to detect the weapon that was in the student's backpack. So, yeah, there are examples of them. Those, some systems not succeeding. Did you mean more like the preventing, or like? I just, I just wondered what you had found. Like, because of course now we hear about school shootings way more often than we want to or should. And so we're being reactive, but was there any are there any positive stories where a school was proactive and it prohibited something? Or I just wondered what you had found. Um, Do you know anything about the, the case in New Jersey? I think it was New Jersey. She was in New Jersey, but alerted someone to what was going to happen in Kentucky. Did you all hear about the read that? I think we uh, researched more of like the negatives that are happening now and kind of how to fix them more than kind of, I guess, how they work. So is this a state, a local, a federal problem to be solved? All of the above? I mean, how do we, how do we attack it? I think the government should endorse it, but not mandate it. Um, same thing for the state, but it should come down to, for public schools, the government should have funds for them, but the school should be the one that decides whether or not they're gonna implement it and how far they are. What is the appropriate response um, when you have, let's say you, you form staff in your building? and a student is able to <coughs> and use it. Now we don't have to worry about them bringing it in. They don't have to go through the metal detector. They don't have to find their own weapon. It's in the school and the student's able to access it. I would say, just kind of like through my own thinking, I would say that the rest of the teachers treat it as if it was just like, I guess a normal school shooting. Yeah, but um, <coughs> I think that, that if we took the right steps in the beginning, that would be unlikely because we would kind of put teachers that agreed to carry through like a physical test to make sure that it's extremely unlikely that they get overpowered and get their weapon. Okay. So is that gonna eliminate some people? Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put my difficult hat on and so do we have um, discrimination issues with regard to that? Like between them, I'll say if you, if someone is so nitpicky and like, I'm trying to say, like so pushed for feminism, that 
they put uh, their feminist agenda over the lives of children, something's messed up with them. I'm just, like, I'm just, if someone is not seen fit to do the job, then they shouldn't be put or be asked to do the job. Well, and then they make debate as to who's deciding to do it. says this is the best thing for our school safety and you should I mean God put them in authority over you and you're supposed to respect that authority that's what the Bible says and so you can either respectfully disagree and leave or you know suck it up and say, I signed up to be an elementary school teacher I signed up to teach kindergartners or first graders I didn't sign up to carry a gun or be around people who carry guns I don't allow guns in my house so why should I allow them in my workplace? I mean, do you have a response? Uh, it's easy for us to talk about this here in high school, but think about carrying guns in an elementary school. It kind of comes down to the world we're living in right now. Mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a safety precaution that we have to take, then I feel like it's something the teacher has to deal with. Although they're not being forced to carry a weapon, but, yeah, if it comes down to whether a kid's going to shoot up a preschool and another teacher has a weapon, that's, that's also a positive. But it was also your choice not to, not to carry. So it comes down to the world. So what do I do if I have a, I'm an administrator and I've decided this is the best method, but I have um, none of my teachers alone? I think you should do it at that point. Yeah. If no one is behind you, when you're trying to change this, there's going to be no change because no teachers are going to um, accept your offer to carry a gun. I think that if that's the case, the administration should just stop it. However, though, interpreting that differently and rather saying, instead of saying none of the teachers want to, uh, instead of none of the teachers are able, there are also schools that we, we ourselves implement paid officers that are able to handle situations that maybe the teachers could not, so that that's <coughs> as well. And, and maybe teachers might not be so enthused with knowing, like having their coworkers carry, but a, a, a trained and employed police officer might <coughs> feel a little bit more comfortable. Guys, follow-up question to that. Um, in, in your research, are you finding any schools uh, nationwide that, you know, it's, it's uncharted territory, right? So, like, we really haven't established best practices on arming teachers yet. But in your research, have you found any schools that are implementing armed teachers? Uh, and kind of, like, what's some of the feedback that the, those schools are, you know, maybe they've gone through the process already? So, Mr. Overton's last school uh, did armed teachers. <coughs> Uh, he wouldn't exactly tell us what school it was because he didn't know if he could divulge that information. Sure. But uh, he was in Lawrenceburg somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to tell us a mile But uh, there, there was certainly, uh, because of the response time, because of where they are, they felt that it was necessary to uh, arm teachers, and the teachers did agree. Okay. So there's. 
So do you think that's like a good, it'd be a good practice? Like let's say LCA starts having, you know, the, the board gets together and say, hey, this is a topic that we really 